Good morning and welcome to your somatic practice this morning. So in light of sort of the number of weeks now we've been in social distancing and that feeling of isolation that we were talking about before class, I keep reminding myself that this is the time where it's really, real, really important to come back to our centre. So we're going to move from our centre to our periphery today. And so start to notice your centre. Start to notice that area between your pelvis or your pubic bone and your navel. And start to sink your awareness into here. Where is your centre? Your hara. And notice as you breathe into your abdomen how soft is the abdomen this morning. How relaxed your abdominal muscles. And then let that go. And then notice your lower back. And notice the points of contact on your lower back and the floor. Become aware of the weight on the back of the pelvis and notice is the weight even in the left and right body. Where is the weight on your tailbone? Is it towards one side or centered? Are you right on the middle of the tailbone? Or are you heading towards the outer edge? And then from here, take your awareness down your legs. If your knees are bent, notice where your knees are in space. If your legs are long, notice your points of contact. And then notice the weight on your feet. So if your knees are bent, it's the whole soles of your feet. And if your legs are long, it's the heels and where the weight is on the heels. And see if you can start to notice any subtle differences. As Thomas Hanna said, if you can sense it and feel it, you can change it. And then once you have a sense from your centre down to your feet, bring your awareness back up to your centre. Notice the upper abdomen, the diaphragm. How easy is it for you to breathe this morning? If you imagine that your breath is trying to touch the skin on the inside out, how easily does it reach the front of the body? The sides of the body, the back of the ribs. Notice how free is the, the whole rib barrel or the rib basket. When you breathe in, how easily do all the ribs move? Without strain. Then become aware of the weight on your shoulder blades. The space between the back of the shoulders and the floor. And take the awareness down through your arms to your hands. And notice where you're able to give weight easily. Where is it a little more challenging? You think about your relationship with gravity in this moment. Gravity is taking you towards the floor. Where are the parts that surrender to gravity? Where are the parts that are resisting gravity? And 
And then notice the position of your head, the weight on the back of the head. And remember when we focus on our cells of the soma, we're acknowledging that we're more than our physical body. Soma means being. And a soma will always move forward, face forward and move forward. And so in this time of social distancing, it's a time of reflection where because we're unable to move as fast or as forward or as outward, in a way we turn and look inward. And so notice how you feel. And we acknowledge the feelings. We give them a label if you like, or we acknowledge them by actually stating what we're feeling. When we sense it and feel it and acknowledge it, then we are able to change it. So tap into how you feel at this moment. Witness that. And not who you are, but rather a sensation that you experience. And gently bring your hands to your heart space, either into prayer pose or with one palm down and the other palm over the top. And take a moment this morning, if you wish, to dedicate this practice. And maybe you wish to set an intention for yourself throughout this practice. Ata, yoga, New Shasana, it is with great respect and infinite love for ourselves and all being that we now come to this practice. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. You bring your hands down beside you. Bend up your knees if your legs are long and plant your feet. And just notice when you plant your feet without much thought. Have you lined them up with your sit bones? Are they wider than your sit bones? Don't change them now, just notice where did they land? Is the weight on the inside, on the outside of the feet? Are the knees rolling in? Are the knees stacked directly above the feet? And remember too that if you take your feet a little wide, then your knees will roll in. And sometimes it's more to do with where the feet have been placed than the inner thighs overworking. Notice your imprint. Scan from your feet to your head and notice how you give way to gravity. And then take a breath in and gently arch your back. And as you arch your back, Feel and allow the front of the body to let go. Feel the pelvis roll towards your feet. And stop at the top and notice, are you, is the weight dead centre or have you deviated towards one side? And then slowly let your back melt, like warm honey drizzling off a spoon. And keep going all the way into your flatten this morning. Go all the way into your flatten, let your pelvis roll towards your ribs, ribs towards your pelvis. And then super slow, come back to neutral and switch off. And do that one more time. I really want you to notice how easily are you moving through your center. So as you breathe in and out, is there a deviation to one side of the pelvis? And as you pause and notice that, if there is, there'll be more weight on that foot, the same side foot. And then when you need to breathe out again, let your back go. How easily can your back let go this morning? Let your pelvis roll to your ribs, ribs to your pelvis. Do your ribs move? Does your head tip back? 
How easily are you moving from your center out to your head? And slowly come back to neutral and switch off. And then from here, roll over onto your side and come to your hands and knees. Like <laughs> Come to your hands and knees, and same idea. I want you to flow through just two rounds of cat cow. Where you can see me. So as you breathe in, start to lift your sit bones, let your breastbone move forward, draw back on your hands. Remember, you could be on your fists if that's better for you this morning, or even on your elbows. And then as you exhale, tuck your tail. And allow the ripple of your breath to move through your spine. And notice how easily do you move from your center to the tip of your tail. You breathe in, lifting that tail, lifting your crown. And how easily do you move from your center as you exhale and round your spine. And then come back to your flat back and make your way into standing. So if you can walk your hands back towards your feet, do so. You might like to hang for a moment and just notice how does your back feel this morning? Can you let go of the tension in your neck? And then roll yourself up into standing. And as you come to standing, just land. And think about it too much, land. And notice where your feet are in relation to your sit bones. So notice if you've got your feet wide. Do, are your heels directly underneath your sit bones? Or are your feet together? Is there more weight on one foot than the other? And if there is more weight on one foot than the other, go back to what you found when you did your arch and your release. Is that the same foot? that you rocked towards when you're on your back lying and arching. And then come, become aware of this center, energetic center, sometimes called the hara. And it's usually between the two chakras, the solar chakra and the sacral chakra. And then take yourself for a walk and I want you to notice how connected do you feel from this center through your legs to your opposite shoulder. And just notice. How easily do you move from here? Is your whole trunk locked down this morning? Are you moving freely? Do, you, do your ribs roll around your spine? And does your head move? And then come back and just stand once again. And as you stand, again, notice how you land. Notice where your feet like to be. And I want you to notice that connection from your tail to the base of your skull. Where are you looking? Are you looking down so your spine is slightly rounded? Or in somatics they talk about it's that, the red light pattern where you're slumped and you'll be looking down. Or are you looking up and so you're more in that cow pose on your hands and knees where you're looking up and your back is contracted and your pelvis is tilted forward? Or are you really in the center? And just notice. And then take your time and roll yourself back down. Come all the way down to the floor. Bend your knees and come onto your back. And when you land here again, just notice, is it a really, is it a habit that you place your feet wider than your pelvis? So if you always place your feet wide, then you're going to, your knees are rolling you to find where you're going. So walk your feet all the way in together, have the inner blades of your feet touching, and then just go heel, toe. Usually it's only about once that you need to heel, toe out. And then check that your sit bones are lining up with your heels. And now notice the weight on your pelvis and notice the weight on your feet. And then as you breathe in, Start to arch your back, and if you know that you're rocking towards one side, place your hand on that front of that pelvis and the opposite rib, and deliberately rock to that side. 
it's more common that we will do this asymmetrically than symmetrically. So do more of what your brain wants to do and then let your back melt. Let your back release like warm honey drizzling off a spoon and completely switch off at neutral. So we're just going to do arch to neutral. And again, breathe in and rock toward that side of your pelvis. Maybe the opposite shoulder blade is starting to press towards the floor, feeling the back contract on that diagonal. And then slowly let your back melt and switch off. And then let's swap diagonals. So take the opposite hand to the lower pelvis. So you're working on this diagonal now. So this is not your default, but go slower. Doesn't matter how big the movement is, make it as easeful as you can. So you're rocking towards that other side of your pelvis. Notice how there's more weight on the foot. Can you press the opposite shoulder back? If your head wants to move, let it happen. And then just let your back melt. And keep going. Rocking onto this second side. Let your shoulder press back, let your head move, and then let your back melt. I thought I'm melting my hot sourdough toast. And do a couple more, because we've already rocked to the other side a few times every time I've got your arch before. And then let your back melt, like pancake batter in a hot pan. And the next time you release back to neutral pause. And notice the weight in the back of the body. Notice the weight on your feet. And so now take a breath in and arch and notice how you're arching more centrally now. So the weight is more even through both sides of the pelvis. Feel the front of the body letting go from your center to your pubic bone to the breastbone, all the way out to the front, the top of your shoulders on the front. Feel the back of the body contracted all the way to your shoulders, maybe even to the back of your head. And then slowly let your back go. Let your back go, let your back go. Sink in the center. Let your pelvis roll towards your ribs, ribs roll towards your pelvis. And remember if your ribs don't move, place your hands there. Tipping your head back. Now slowly keeping the back long. Let the front of the body lengthen. And switch off. And notice how it felt to flatten. And then do that again. If you need your hands on your ribs, remember come quite high on the ribs with your hands. Take a breath in and let your back arch. And as your back arches, feel your hands spread as your ribs open. And then as you breathe out, let your back go like a really good hose coming out of a reel. Keep going all the way to flatten, sinking your ribs. Try to get your ribs to move as well as your pelvis. It's like you pour, if you had a bowl of water and a barrel of water in your chest and a bowl of your pelvis, you're pouring it all into your centre just below your ribs and your head tips back and then very slowly start to let the front of the body lengthen to lower your back down. Do one more on your own and notice is it easier for you to arch this morning or is it easier for you to flatten? And then when you're ready, take your hands off your body. And when you're finished. And I'm curious, was it easier for you to arch this morning? Raise your hand if it was. Was it easier for you to flatten this morning? Well, the flattens win. <laughs> About seven to one. <laughs> so. So let's start this morning by letting go. If it's easier for you to flatten, it means your back's letting go to allow you to flatten your back. So we're going to release the front. 
which makes sense in the light of what's been happening in the last few weeks. So take uh, one hand, bring it behind your head, and pick up the same side foot. So we're doing a half arch and curl, yeah? So on your inhaling breath, you're gonna arch your back, press your shoulder down towards the floor, Feel your thigh move away and that whole side of your back might contract more. And then as you breathe out, you tuck your elbow in and you sit on up, bringing your elbow to point towards the knee or maybe even if the back lets go a lot, they might even move quite close together. But it's not about how far, remember, it's how easily. And then super slow, keeping your hand pointing or your elbow pointing towards your knee, slowly release yourself back down. Once your head touches down, release your arm. And then just touch your foot to the floor, keeping your knee bent on that first round. And slowly switch off. And then let's do that again. Same hand, same foot. And take your other hand and bring it to the front of your thigh. We'll add a little bit of resistance here. So take a breath in and let your back arch and press your shoulder. So it's not so much about your elbow, so you can keep your elbow quite high if that's better for you. Press your shoulder blade down and let your leg nod away, no pressure with the hand. And as you breathe out, let your back go. Let your leg come all the way in and resist the leg as you tuck your elbow in and sit on up. And then keep your leg really still. Keep the pressure of the hand on the leg and slowly like you're lifting your head off your shoulders, slowly start to release. Your head back down. Create traction by lifting that head. Once your head touches down, bring your arm down. Touch your foot and now let's slide the leg to long. So remember as you slide your leg to long, you want to keep your back really relaxed. And imagine a rope now that you're lengthening in from your centre. Higher up though, under your ribs and all the way down to your heel. Completely switch off. And then let's start this last one with the legs straight. So have the hip, knee, and toes facing the ceiling. Take your hand behind your head, but have your elbow quite high. So elbows tucked in towards your head already. On your breath in, press your straight leg down and your shoulder blade down. Your elbow might go out a little, but won't make it to the floor. And then as you breathe out, tuck that elbow back in, slide your leg up, sink your ribs and curl. Stop your leg now with your other hand. And then super slow, start to release your upper body. Like you're lowering your grand piano out of the window and you're lifting your head off your shoulder. And once your head touches down, bring your arm down. Touch your foot, slowly slide. And completely switch up. And then straighten your second leg for a moment. And just notice how the first side feels compared to the second. Pretty sure your floor is still straight and flat and level, but notice how you feel. And then front leg your legs back up. Let's come to the second side. So we'll build on it like we did. So start with uh, first of all that your hands not on your knee, hands just down beside you. Take a breath in and arch your back, pressing your shoulder blade down, let your thigh not away. Then when you breathe out, tuck your elbow in, let your back go, sit on up. Sink your ribs, and if you need some help, you can use your second hand to sink your ribs down a little more. Especially on this second side. What is it that makes it your second side? And then super, super slow. You feel like you're lifting your head off your shoulders. Creating traction through the rib cage. Let your head touch down, let your arm touch down, and just touch your foot and stop with the knee bent. So I want you to really tune in to what 
was restricting your then. And if you felt like your ribs weren't moving, then you might take your opposite hand and have it on your ribs for the next two rounds. Yeah, even though we're doing different things with our leg. So take your hand behind your head, lifting your foot off the floor. Remember your elbow starts tucked in. You breathe in, you arch your back, pressing your shoulder blade down. Feel the side of your back contract as your thigh nods away. Then let your back go. Sink your ribs down. So you might need your hand to help you as you sit on up. So you can stay here with that pressure on your ribs or now bring your hand to your thigh. Stop your thigh from moving. It's the anchor point. You slowly lengthen the front of your body like you're lifting your head off your shoulders. And once your head touches down, bring your arm down beside you, touching your foot to the floor as close to your pelvis as you can. Super slow. Start to slide that leg. Keeping your back really long. So remember you don't need to straighten the knee all the way. If you can, you keep your back relaxed, which might mean you need to keep your knees slightly bent. Completely switch off. And let's start with this, the next round with that leg, how it is. Take the same hand behind your head, tuck your elbow in. On your inhaling breath, press down through your leg. So if your knee needs to be bent, press your heel down. Press your shoulder blade down. Then as you breathe out, tuck that elbow in even more, slide the leg up, foot off the floor. Hand could be on the ribs to encourage the ribs down so as you sit up. And then you can stop your thigh or just keep your hand on the ribs. Super slow. Lengthening from your center. Feel like you're allowing the space between the ribs to lengthen. Bring your head down, touch your arm down, then touch your foot and slowly slide. And as you lengthen now, imagine that rope and the anchor point is right up underneath your ribs. And you're sliding your leg, keeping your back as relaxed as you can and completely switch off. And then let your first leg meet your second leg. Notice how bioplastic you are. Notice how quickly you can make change in your neurology. And then bend up your knees and just let your feet land. And notice, where did you place your feet? Where is the weight on your pelvis now? The weight on your feet. And take a breath in and come into your arch. Notice how far up the spine, the arch move. And you might even feel like you want to allow your arms this morning to roll back as you arch. And then as you breathe out, sink in the center. If your arms want to move, let them roll with you. And you sink your ribs down and tip your head back. And super slow, come back to neutral. So let's do that again and bring it into flower arms without moving your legs to start with. I just want you to feel that your feet are even and the weight is even on your feet. So if you find flower easier with your hands on your ribs, you can have your hands on your ribs, otherwise your arms are down beside you. We're literally just building on what you were doing. Take a breath in and let your back arch. And as you arch your back, let your arms roll back from your shoulder blades. So imagine your arms are like rolling pins and you're rolling them along the floor. Rolling them so your palms face up towards the crown of your head. And then as you breathe out, sink in the center. Let your pelvis roll towards your ribs, but let your ribs sink down. Like there's an epicenter in the middle of the lower part of your ribs and you're sinking everything into that sink hole. Let your shoulders come off the floor, let your arms roll in. Keep rolling your arms like rolling pins. So roll your arms in so the backs of your hands face your thighs. Let your head tip back. This is the flower, flower arms. And now very slowly moving from your center, feel like you're lengthening a rope. From your pubic bone to your breastbone to your collarbones, let it divide to your shoulders. 
and let your shoulders sink back to the floor as you let your arms follow and roll the palms up. Chin back to neutral, head in neutral. And notice your feet and notice the weight of your feet. And this time let your legs move with you. So as you breathe in and arch your back, roll those shoulders back, let your arms follow like rolling pins, spiraling them open. Let your knees go wide this time. So the weight will come onto the outer blade of your feet. And then as you exhale, sink in the center, like there's a sinkhole between your physical navel and the bottom of your breastbone. Roll everything into that. Roll your arms in, backs of hands face the floor, even press your thumbs down firmly into the floor, head tips back. Hold that for a moment. Could you breathe into the back of the body gently? Feel how the back is opened and the front has sunk and is contracted, like there's two ropes from each pelvis to your opposite shoulder that are pulling you into the midline. This is what happens when we slump on the computer too long or slump on the couch and then very slowly start to lengthen the ropes on the front so that you can let your shoulders release, your arms roll back to neutral. Can you let your legs come back to neutral? Where do you go? Don't change it, just notice. Do you end up staying on the inner blade? Do you end up staying with your knees wide? Whatever you've done, so if you've gone wide, can you go wider? And if, you, if you're on the inner blade, squeeze your knees in and then slowly make your way back to neutral with your feet. One more time if you flower. Taking a breath in, moving from your center, feel the back arch, that's what encourages the knees to widen. As the breastbone lifts and the shoulders press back, that encourages your arms to roll back and your head to tip. So your chin moves down on the in breath. And then as you breathe out, let the center move you. So sink in your center like a sinkhole, like everything is being pulled into that place. Feel the ropes contracting or the rubber bands on the diagonals and your knees squeeze in and your arms roll in. Press your hands down, let your head tip back. And then slow, slow. Let go of the ropes in the front of the body. To let your shoulders release, your arms release. And notice where do you come to with your feet. Is the weight even on both feet? Is it still more weight on one foot than the other? What do you find? And pause here. And take your hands up so that your hands are apart. It's like you're holding a barrel. You can go a bit wide if you like for a ball. Like you're holding a big ball, like a Swiss ball, a fit ball. And again, when we move through the scapular swing and we're moving our arms, it's reminding us that our arms are connected to our center because it's all about the barrel of your ribs. So when you're ready, you roll the barrel of your ribs to one side and you reach the opposite hand up to the ceiling. So your hand goes straight up because you've let go of that tension or any tightness between the shoulder blades. And then slowly let the barrel of the ribs roll back down. And go to the other side. So roll your ribs to one side, reaching your hand up towards the ceiling, and then very slowly let the ribs roll back. And go from side to side. And as you do, I want you to notice what's happening in your feet. So yeah, your weight will change on your feet. And notice if it's different as you roll the ribs to the left. How does that compare to when you roll the ribs to the right? Then come back to center when you bring the second arm down and bring your arms down beside you. 
And we do a very similar thing with the pelvis. So imagine your pelvis is a bowl of water and you might need to cover your knee initially and do it on the same side so it's easier. So there's a few images that will help you. Let's start with the bowl of water. So the pelvis is full of water and you just slosh the water over into the right side without pouring it out the image. Notice how there's more weight on the right foot. And then can you lift the right foot off the floor? And then place it back down. So if you shift the weight too far, it's really hard to lift the foot off the floor. So just shift the weight enough across into the right side and lift the foot off the floor. Bring the foot back down. Let the water come back to level. Weight's even on your feet. And this time you might imagine a marble. And the marble at the moment is sitting in the middle of your pelvis. If there's a line between those two pointy bones of your pelvis at the front, your ASISs, it's like your, the marble sitting in the middle. And now you're just going to roll the marble to the left and lift the left foot. And then bring that left foot back down. Bring the marble back to centre. Another image is sand. So sink the sand across to the right. Let it weight into the right pelvis and lift the right foot. Bring the foot back, bring the sand to level. So pick an image that works for you. Marble, whatever you're moving, you know, you're keeping it contained within the pelvis, but rather just sloshing it over to the right as you lift the right foot. Place it back down, come back to level. Notice where level is. Then roll the marble to the left, but not rolling it off your pelvis. So you can lift the left foot and bring it back down. And just go from side to side as easily as you can. You don't need to lift that foot very high. Shifting the weight and still able to lift the foot. This is what happens when we move and walk easily. We shift the weight without hitching the pelvis. And then we step. So come back to neutral now. So we started on the right, we finished on the left. And you might have noticed probably with that that one side was easier than the other. We're going to put those two moves together. So take your arms back up like you're holding the beach ball. And roll your ribs to one side and reach your hands to the ceiling. And I want you to notice which way is easier for you. Which side feels easier for you? Okay, when you find which side feels easier for you, whether your arms are extended or you're doing the elbow version, then keep that arm or elbow up and put the other one down, just so you don't get confused. And so you're going to roll your ribs away from the arm, you're going to reach to the ceiling, reach to the ceiling, shift the weight into the pelvis to the other side and then lift the foot. So it means you're lifting the opposite foot to the head, just like when you did that. Bring your foot back down, pelvis to level, ribs to level. Bring that arm down. We're going to swap. Yeah, so take the other hand up. Roll your ribs like a barrel. So on this side, don't expect to move as far. Make it small. Notice already, you might have noticed already that this, the waters or the marble had been rolled across to the opposite or diagonal pelvis and then lift the foot and then place it back down let your pelvis come back to level ribs to level arms down once you've got it you can keep both hands up and just go side to side however if you find this a little challenging i think it's easier just for your brain to have one arm off so roll your ribs away from the arm you're moving reach it to the ceiling let it roll back down sorry keep it there as you shift the water into the opposite side of the pelvis and lift the foot. And then you'll place the foot down, bring your pelvis to level, ribs to level. And then keep going. Nice work. Remember, it doesn't need to be a big movement. So, Jock, when you lift your leg, just lift your foot without you moving your knee. So, you literally just lift your foot a little bit off the floor. Like you. Um, Someone's just sliding a, a blanket underneath you or your slipper under your foot. 
and then go from side to side to notice how it feels. So when you're doing this though, Sharon, watch your arms don't go to the side. So you're still reaching straight up. So it's not a scapula, it's not a steeple, rather reaching up straight up to the ceiling with your hand. Try not to roll your arms to the side. And then when you've had enough, bring your arms back down. Notice where your feet landed. Maybe even bring your knees into your chest for a moment and rock from side to side. Notice how your back feels. And then place your feet back down. Just let them land. Notice where they land and notice the weight on your feet. And then come back to an arch and a flat and then breathe in and let your back arch. And notice how far along your spine does that movement go. If your breastbone lifts, is your head starting to soften, chin towards your chest. And as you breathe out, you flatten your back. If you sink your ribs down, does your head tip back on its own? How easily are you connecting your head to your centre? And then come back to neutral and switch off. And then take your hands up again and let's go into steeple this time. So hands are interlaced, elbows stay straight. Remember this is all about the barrel of your ribs or the basket of your ribs. I like the barrel because it rolls. Roll the barrel to one side and let your arms follow, keeping both elbows straight. And then just go from side to side. Now your pelvis might want to move a little here so you're not keeping it locked down. So the emphasis is on the ribs. And then the next time you come back to centre pause, bring your arms to the other side in. Notice your imprint. How easily are you giving way to gravity from the back of your head all the way down to your hands and to your feet? Notice the weight on your legs. And if you've noticed that you've rolled in on one foot, roll it in more, and then bring it back. So whatever you notice, do more. And then find your neutral four car tires grounded. And from here, we're going to roll onto our side. I'd like you to choose your own side, and I think you guys know your side bends well enough to do that. So roll onto whatever side you'd like to be, and you will need something underneath your head. So hopefully, you've got, if you haven't got anything, just even roll up your mat. And come down on your side. If you need to see me, then you might need to take yourself over. But a lot of you know this sequence, so you're okay. You can even go side on on your mat, Rosie, if you need to see. So have your knees up at a right angle and have your feet together. And imagine you've been sitting really well in your chair at your computer. So you're in a, a straight back position. So your back is lengthened. There's a right angle at your hips and there's a right angle at your knees. And you can just see your toes beyond your knees. Notice, have you rolled yourself forward? Have you rolled your bottom under? Sorry, you've taken your bottom shoulder under so you're rolling slightly back. If you're against a wall, are you straight? And if you're not, you might need to slide that bottom arm underneath you a little more. So you're lying as straight as you can. And if you've been like me, doing too much looking at screen, <laughs> I'm noticing my head is going forward again. And that's just a habit. So I can actually pick up my head and take it back in line with my spine. So see if you can have your head in line with your spine. Then take your top hand and put it in that space between your pelvis and your ribs. Like you're cranking somewhere. Stick your hand in there and go in so you can actually feel the muscles. I'm going to take a breath in. And as you breathe in, breathe into your bottom ribs and lift both feet this morning, keeping your knees down. 
Keep breathing as you hold here. Can you feel the muscles contracting around your waist? And now slowly let the muscles of your waist lengthen like a rope that's been shortened between your armpit and your pelvis. And as you lengthen the rope, notice that that will lower your leg and switch off. So you don't want any pressure in your neck. If you've been overworking your neck muscles with computer work, etc., or too much knitting or whatever you've been doing, then you might even need to let your head down. You could take your bottom hand and bring it under your armpit. So this is where your rope is. Your rope is from your armpit on this top side to your pelvis, between your hands. Take a breath in. This time come up on the exhale. As you exhale, shorten the rope. And as you shorten the rope between your hands, your head might lift, but this time without any strain in your neck. Let your feet lift. And now super, super slow. Feel like you're lengthening that rope between your hands. Slowly lowering it. So let your legs go down and your head come down. Keep your hands here if this is helpful, otherwise you can take your hands off. And come up on whichever breath was better for you. It might be breathing into the bottom ribs to open them like clamshells, so you can tighten the rope on the top and come up. And then super slow, lengthen the rope on the top. Try and keep the rope on the bottom lengthened as well. And switch it. One more time. Notice if it's easy to come up on the in breath or the out breath. Keep breathing once you start moving, of course. And never hold your breath. And then feel like the breath is lengthening to lower your head, to lower your feet, and switch it. And then bring your arms out off your body and check that your knees are still at a right angle. And we can come into what I call grasshopper legs. And so this is really just about shifting the weight of your pelvis. And so you're sliding your top leg forward, like someone has their hand just in front of your knee. You slide that top knee and shin or thigh, bone and pelvis forward. And then you just bring your pelvis back to work. And I've just put my hand on the back of my pelvis. Sometimes that will help you really give you some feedback as to what you're moving. You're moving your pelvis. You have to let go through your waist to let this happen. And then come back to knees together. Bring your hands out into shoulder height. Then come into your arm slide. So you're going to slide your arm across your body and let your ribs roll open. So notice that even though you're moving your arm, you're moving from your centre, your ribs roll like a barrel, and that slides your head forward. And your ribs roll open like a barrel, and that drags your arm across your body, taking you into the twist. And your ribs turn from your centre. Let your head follow the movement. If it's better for your neck to keep looking to the floor, do so, but otherwise could you let your head follow and look to the ceiling? If your arm was coming to the floor behind you, your shoulder blade would come before your elbow, before your hand. And then just keep flowing with your arm slide. Now you can keep going with arm slider if you'd like to go into propeller the next time you have your hands together, pause here. I find with propeller I don't need anything under my head. You might need less or take your top out. You keep the bottom knee bent up and you straighten your top leg. Turn your chest like that barrel that it is towards the floor and reach your arm up. So if you're lying on your right side, it means your hands are off, you're reaching up to your other and turn the back and one. And remember your back is not arching here, you're lengthening to your side. And then you roll your ribcage open, drawing your arm across the body, your leg might come forward. Knee can be straight or bent. And then let the centre move you, move from your centre. 
if you feel like you're moving from your hand and your foot, then clip your wing, shorten your levers. Bring your hand into the chest. And imagine you don't have an arm, just move from your shoulder bone. Keep your knee bent so that you're moving from your pelvis and your leg forward. And then when you're ready, you're going to roll over onto your back. And pause on your back. And as you pause on your back, either with your knees bent or your legs long, your choice. Notice your imprint. How easily are you giving way to breath? And then roll yourself onto the other side. So setting yourself up on the other side, make sure that your knees are together. <clears throat> Try and lie as straight as you can. So it's really easy to roll the bottom arm forward and you'll end up your ribs, the barrel of your ribs are rolled back. So try and have the barrel stacked. Left side on top of right, right on top of left, depending on which side you're on. Place a hand into the space between your pelvis and your ribs. Right angle at the knees, right angle at the hips, just so you see the toes past them. If you found it helpful to have that bottom hand on your in your armpit so you've got a real sense of this is the rope that you're contracting, then do that. Take a breath in. Come up on the exhale, opening the bottom ribs or opening that bottom rope to shorten the top. Lift your feet. If you need a visual, you end up like this. Lifting your feet, keeping your feet and legs or your lower legs parallel. Try not to bring your heels to your body. And then super slow, start to lengthen the rope on the top side without shortening the bottom. And keep your underside really relaxed. And then completely switch off. Take the mic off, sorry, you're getting lots of floor noise. And then this time, come up on the in-breath. So as you breathe in, send your breath into the bottom side. Feel like the top side shortens, head might lift or it might stay down. And now super slow, let your breath flow, take your time. Several breaths to lower, lengthening your top side to lower the feet, release your arm, switch off. You choose whether you come up on the in-breath. So for me, I like the in-breath because it encourages my underside to open and stay relaxed as I shorten the top side. But for other people, it's easier on the exhale, so notice what's right for you. And then take your time, slow motion release. And switch off. Two more on your own. Can you do this as easily as you possibly can? Can you lengthen the bottom side to shorten the top side? Remember that idea of ropes and pulleys. As one side lengthens, it's easier for the other side to shorten. And then you'll come back and bring your hands together. But let's do grasshopper legs first. So knees are together. Feet are still in that position where you can just see your toes beyond your knees. And if it's helpful, you can put one hand on the back of the pelvis that you're moving and you slide your pelvis forward and your whole thigh bone moves forward so your knee will move forward. And then slowly bring it back just to level. So we're doing the leg first. So you're just sliding your leg forward and bring it back. This is fantastic if you ever are tight in your lower facet joints of your lumbar spine. You can feel it, you're opening up and lengthening the facet joints and creating space on the top side. So if you've got your hand in your pelvis and you're noticing there's a tight spot in your lower back, get your thumb into it. 
press it as you're taking leg four. Self mobilize. And then bring your knees back together. And bring your hands together for arm slide. So remember your arm slide. And again, in arm slide, you might even like to take your pillow out or your prop out. You're rolling your ribs like a barrel and that's drawing your arm with you. And the same as you come to the floor, let your ribs roll to the floor, slide your hand across your bottom hand and flow with your breath. And you could just keep going with arms like it's such a powerful twist, a great twist. Or if you want to go into, you know, to turn my back, go crack. <laughs> this microphone. If you, if you want to go into propeller, turn your chest towards the floor, take your arm a little higher and your leg back. Remember your back stays in neutral, you're moving from your centre. You either take your arm over your head. As your leg comes forward. And if you feel like you're focusing on just moving your arm and your leg, then tuck them in and let your ribs move. And then maybe reach your arm as an afterthought. Move from the center. And when you feel balanced, stay on your side rather than rolling back onto your back. Pause on your side and then come up onto your hands and knees from your side. And from your hands and knees, come back to where we began. Inhaling, arching, drawing back on your hands. And notice how hopefully now there's a little bit more movement in more places. Curly as you exhale. Notice how easily do you move from your center out to the tip of your tailbone to the crown of your head. As you inhale and come into cow, and as you exhale and round yourself into cow. And if you'd like to, one more. We've been playing with moving around the center and using the ribs like a barrel. And you can do that in this position, just wanted to remind you. So grasshopper legs, arms slide, and scapula swing, all the things we've done in different positions, you can then do that here. So you roll your ribs to the right and lift your left hand up, and then place the, rib, the hand back down as the ribs come to level. Roll your rib to the other side, and then bring the hand back down. But remember, your hand doesn't need to go out to the side, it just lifts straight up, like someone's placing a piece of paper underneath it, and you're putting your hand back down onto the paper. And then the same with your pelvis. Tops of feet stay on the floor. Think about the sand. Shift the sand in your pelvis to the left, but not too far. And then lift that right knee up, keeping the foot down. Then go the other way. Shift the sand to the right side, lift, the knee, so you're not chopping the knee out to the side, but lifting it straight up. Just a couple of times on each side. Feel the freedom in your lower back with this one. It's a good one. It's grasshopper legs on your hands and knees. And then just last time, come back into a round of cat cow. Or two. And notice if it's changed even more. And then if you love child, take your time to sink yourself into child. If you don't love child, make your way up into your Uttanasana and you hang here. Those who are in child, give the weight of the front of the body into the floor. Breathe from your centre when you're in child or Uttanasana. So 
So if child's not right for you, come jog, come up into, into this one, into your forward bend. And wherever you are, breathe from your centre and send your breath out into all of your fingers and your toes. Feel like you're breathing from the core of the earth, bring it to your centre and let it spread into every cell. And as you breathe out, breath back to centre and down into the earth. And then when you're ready, you're going to slowly make your way into Uttanasana, this forward bend where you have your belly on your thighs, no pressure in the back, let your neck flow. Take a breath around here, you're breathing in from the earth. Let your breath meander into every single cell in your body. And as you breathe out, send your breath down through your head, from your centre, down through your legs through your hands, all the way back into the earth. Stay there for as long as you're enjoying it. And then when you are ready, you're going to roll yourself back up into standing. And as you land in standing, land. Notice where are your feet? Where is your weight? The weight on the inside or the outside of your feet. Are your feet turned in or turned out? Are your knees soft? Where is your pelvis in space? Where is your rib cage? Gently open your eyes and notice where you're looking. Now, as you go for a walk, notice how easily you move from your centre. How easily do the diagonals communicate to one another? How does it feel on your feet? Often when we're moving from our centre, we have that sense of rolling really easily from your heel to the ball of your foot. Sense what you sense, notice what you notice. And then make your way back, and you might even like to roll down and hang in that into us in the pose again. Feel free if you love it. Knees are really soft, belly on thighs. If you don't love it, go through it and make your way straight into Shavasana, preparing for yoga nidra. But if you enjoy it, stay there for a little longer if you wish. Totally up to you. You can even walk your hands forward, those of you who love doing downward facing dog, because it's always nice to feel what's your dog feel like after you've released your centre. And hold your dog for a few breaths and really feel like you're breathing in through your hands and feet. And you're drawing your breath to your centre, have your knees bent so you've got that length in your spine. And every time you exhale, send your breath from your centre down through your hands and feet. That's an option. When you're ready, you'll come out of that downward facing dog and make your way into Shavasana. We're coming into a yoga nidra. So make sure you're warm. Make sure you're comfortable. You might even need a blanket underneath you today, a blanket over you. I'm sure it's not that cold in Port Macquarie. It's like six degrees here in Albury. <laughs> Rosie's in Port Macquarie. And in Murph, in uh, Mount Beauty, I'm sure it's even colder. <laughs> so make sure you're warm. Make sure you're really comfortable. And make any little adjustments that you need to to make yourself even more comfortable. 
Would you be 10% more comfortable? 20%. What would you need to do? If you want to take your legs up on your couch and have a right angle at your hips and your knees. If you haven't already tucked your hands in, you might like to bring your fingers up and massage the base of your skull. And take a breath in and imagine that my hands are on the base of your skull and you're lengthening your neck away from your shoulders. And then massage all the way along your own neck. Bring your hands to your forehead and on myself I place my thumbs out near my temples and my fingers in the middle of my forehead and gently massage across your forehead to your temples and then circle all around the temples and do that again fingers to the midline drawing your fingers out to the side and massage your temples And then place your eye pillow or your scarf over your eyes as you bring your arms down beside you. How easily do you give your weight? How easily do you give in to gravity? There's no need to hold, to struggle against gravity here. Give your weight. Become aware of all of your points of contact, from your heels and your hands to the back of your head. And as you breathe out, consciously give your weight. Consciously receive support. This is yielding. Giving weight. Receiving support. From here, take your awareness to the noises outside of your room and see if you can hear them as a vibration. No judgment, no label. Vibration. And bring the awareness to any noises within your room. Become aware of the noises within your body. Letting go of this. Now it is time to make a resolve. A sankalpa. This is something that you may have forgotten about your true self. And you state it in a way that it already is. I am. Mentally repeating to yourself. Three times. Letting go of this. And now it is time to rotate your awareness around your physical body. 
as I mentioned, the parts of the body feel, sense, and lack each that is moved. Bring all your awareness to the thumb of your right hand. Index finger. Middle finger. Ring finger. Little finger. Arm of the hand. Back of the hand. Right wrist. Lower arm. Elbow. Upper arm. Your right shoulder and armpit. The right side of your chest and waist. Hip. Thigh. Knee and kneecap. Shin. Ankle. Heel. Sole of the foot, top of the foot, right big toe, second, third, fourth, fifth. Feel, sense and release the whole of the right leg and the right arm. Bring all your awareness to the thumb of the left hand. Index finger. Middle finger. Ring finger. Little finger. Arm of the hand, back of the hand, wrist, lower arm, elbow, upper arm, your left shoulder and armpit, the left side of the chest, Waist, hip, thigh, knee and kneecap, shin, calf, ankle, heel, sole of the foot. Top of the foot, your left big toe, second, third, fourth, fifth. Feel, sense, and release the whole of the left leg and the left arm. Releasing the back of the heel, knee, thighs, right buttock, left buttock, tailbone, tip of the tailbone, all of the organs of the pelvis. Whole pelvis, organs of the abdomen, right side of the lower back, left side of the lower back, whole abdomen and lower back. Right side of the mid back, left side of the mid back. Both shoulder blades, the space between the shoulder blades, collarbones, 
breastbone, all of the ribs, diaphragm, all of the organs of the chest. Right side of the neck, left side of the neck, front of the neck, back of the neck, the base of the skull, whole spine, tip of tailbone to base of skull. Scalp, skull, brain, right temple, left temple, forehead, right eyebrow, left eyebrow, the space between the eyebrows. Right eyelid and lashes. Left eyelid and lashes. Right eyeball. Left eyeball. Behind the right eye. Behind the left eye. Whole nose. The right cheek and jaw. Left cheek and jaw. Lips. Teeth. Tongue. Roof of the mouth, floor of the mouth, side walls of the mouth. Feel, sense and release the whole of your head, neck, trunk, both arms, both legs. Feel, sense and release the right side of the body, the left side of the body, whole body, whole body, whole body. Bring your awareness to the point just beyond the nostrils where you notice the cool air entering and the warmed air leaving the nostrils. Feel, sense and imagine that you breathe in through the left nostril and draw that breath to the point between your eyebrows. Feel, sense and imagine that you exhale through the right. Feel, sense and imagine that you breathe in through the right, mentally saying to yourself one. Exhaling through the left, one.
Feel, sense, and imagine that you're breathing in through the left, too. Out through the right, two. In through the right, three. Out through the left, three. In through the left, four. Out through the right, four. In through the right, five. Out through the left, five. And continue to label the breath. Breathing in through the left. Six. Out through the right. Six. If you lose count, go back and begin again at one. And the next time you breathe out through the left, let go of this awareness of all body, alternate nostril breathing. Let go of counting the breath. And keep your awareness of the blank screen of the mind behind your eyes, behind your forehead. As I mentioned, these sensations feel, sense, and imagine, witness these sensations. Become aware of the sensation of cold. Cold. And then let go of that. And become aware of a sensation of heat. Eight. Letting go of that. Become aware of a sensation of heaviness. Heaviness. Letting go of that. Become aware of a sensation of lightness. Lightness. Letting go of that. Keeping awareness blank screen of the unconscious mind and watch this space like you would watch the credits on a movie screen that little bit of curiosity and detachment no judgment pure observation and notice any thoughts any colors
Maybe an image in. Let the blank screen of the mind be like the blue sky. Let the thought, the images, the colors be like the clouds that roll into the space and then roll out of the space. Letting go of this. And now it is time to repeat your resolve exactly as you did at the beginning of this yoga nidra. With feeling and awareness, allow it to permeate deeper and deeper into your being. I am. Letting go of this and start to become aware of your body lying on the floor. Become aware of the weight of the body on the floor. As you breathe in, feel like you're drawing your breath from the core of the earth. Bring it to your navel and let it spread into every single cell in your body. And as you exhale, feel like you're collecting your breath from your navel and send it back into the earth to ground you, into your body and into the earth way down below you. Keep breathing in from the earth and send your breath from your navel into every cell. And move in whatever way you need. Maybe move your fingers and your toes. Maybe you need to bring your knees to your chest. Maybe you'd like to stretch long, taking your arms above your head. And then gently make your way over onto your preferred side and pause there. Take a breath in and out here, feeling yourself ground into the earth as you breathe out. Feel that your practice is fully integrated into your being. And then make your way up into a seated pose. And as you come up into sitting, bring your hands into chin mudra. And the tips of your thumb and the tips of your index are touching like so. 
And then rest your hands into your lap and you can be palms up or palms down. Notice what you need. And then gently close your eyes and let's just have two rounds of mental alternate nostril breathing. Feel, sense and imagine that you inhale through the left. Bring it to the point between your eyebrows and as you exhale, exhale through the nose. Inhaling through right. Exhaling through the left. One more round on your own. Allow your in-breath and your out-breath to be balanced. Letting go of this, keeping your eyes closed or soft, feeling the effects of your practice this morning. And let's finish this practice with three arms. Take a moment as you bring your hands to your heart if you'd like to dedicate this love. And then you'll rub your palms together. Take an inhaling breath as you open your hands wide. with great respect and infinite love that we now conclude this practice. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. I honour that place in you where light, love and truth dwell. For when you rest in that place in you and I dwell in that place in me, we are one. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Shelly. Shelly.